We are moving with um, the last session for today and one of uh, two practical workshops that we will give throughout um, our conference. And uh, we are welcoming Professor Axel Tilcher and researcher from his team, Ola Ponti. Yeah, thanks for the kind invitation. So basically, I was I just want to say briefly, hello. Um, I'm Axel Tilcher. I'm working on SimNips, as, as probably most of you know and also in other parts of brain stimulation, obviously. Uh, right now, I just want to hand over quickly to Ula Ponti. Um, he's, he's a senior postdoc in my lab, and we will do the, the practical session. You will see me then tomorrow again at the very end of the conference, uh, where I tr then try to wrap up a little bit what, what we have seen over these two exciting days. Yeah, so, but um, now I hand over to, to Ula so that he can start. Yes, so yeah. Uh... So I was on camera. I don't know if you were, but I have Axel off camera here. <laughs> and I also have uh, Fang, who's a postdoc in the, in the group uh, too. So the idea was here that we're going to run this pretty informally. Um, so I'm going to click through the homepage, show a few things, how to get started with SimNips, run a few simulations, point to some resources and, and some examples of different analysis you can do. Um, and then um, that will probably take some half an hour and then we'll open for questions. So the introduction will be pretty basic, but then you can bring whatever sort of more advanced questions as well. Um, so I will share my screen now. Uh, hopefully someone can maybe confirm. Okay, I can see it. So hopefully you can all see it as well. Um, so one thing I'll note immediately now is that so we made last year, we run also a tutorial and we have videos of those talks um, on the YouTube, SimNips YouTube channel. So if you want to have a more detailed walkthrough, uh, there's a talk from Axel, uh, well, of, sorry, simulation in SimNips and, and also some computational modeling stuff. I have a talk about uh, head segmentation and creating FEM models. And then Guilherme, who was a PhD student here in the group, talks about TDCS optimization. So those talks are there. Feel free, feel free to look at those if, if you feel like you want more sort of detailed information. But yeah, let's start from the website. So SimNips is being developed at the, the Danish Research Center for Magnetic Resonance and also at the Technical University of Denmark. Uh, we also have some uh, external collaborators, uh, just uh, uh, shown here. So there's people contributing code uh, also from uh, other people from DTU. We have some people from uh, the Max Planck, Constantin Weiser, Thomas Knirsche, and Ole Munson, and, and people from Duke University, and now also more and more, of course, from, from Alex's lab uh, in Minnesota. So, okay, so let's get started with the, with the software uh, part. So if you go to the homepage, um, if you're not familiar at all with SimNips, you can install it by clicking the installation link. You pick the correct uh, OS you have. For example, if you want a Windows installer, you can pick that one. You find a Linux installer and, and also a Mac OS installer. Um, and you download the installer. And, and actually, if you click here, you'll be directed to a registration site. You just have to fill in the information, and then you'll get access to the, the installer. Once you have installed SimNips, you can just uh, open the GUI. So this one, that was another one. All right, so I have here. So I'll just draw some image GUI here, and then it will pop up. Um, so for doing simulations, you also need some data. So we have an example data set which you can download uh, at the link here. I have downloaded it already, so I have it here. So we have a few uh, head models here. We have the, the basic Ernie one that most of you are maybe familiar with if you're using SimNips. Uh, so here is the, the head mesh. And then we also have the, the segmentation uh, results in the M2M folder, uh, different EEG gaps that are transformed to, to, uh, to the subject space, uh, some segmentation results and MNI transformations here. Um, then we also have the MNI head, which is in the same space as the MNI 152 template. 
and here again we have the mesh and and the same sort of output in the in the end to end folder and there's also a sphere for if you want to try out uh, numerical accuracy or do some compared to analytical solutions okay so i'll do some examples so i'll run an example simulation of ernie uh, so i'll set this up so just find the end to end folder here and it automatically loads the, the head model into the GUI. Perfect. And here you can see, for example, the EG positions, also the subject head. You can also look at the gray matter and, and how those positions relate to the different gray matter locations. Um, all right. So let's set up a, a simulation here. Um, I'll do both the TMS and the TDCS simulation at the same goal. Um, so let's start with the TMS. I'll select just the standard coil model we have. And then I'll click add position. Now I guess the position, you can either pick an electro, uh, electrode location here, or you can just uh, set the coil by double clicking example c3 and then the direction so where the coil is pointing uh, like that just double clicking again so that is set uh, and that's sort of the rtms uh, stimulation now i also have some tdcs stuff here so an electrode the first thing i'll do is set the shape Let's have a rectangular electrode first. You can have different geometries, for example, with sponge and, or with gel. And let's have an electrode with gel. Uh, so that's fine. I can set the position. You can either pick here or you can do the clicking thing. So let's put it somewhere where it falls as well. And now this uh, position is just setting the, the rectangular electrode in different. Uh, different orientations. And let's say we put one milliamp of current in and add another electrode. Let's have a circular one now, also with a gel. And let's set it to sort of this more standard montage. Okay, so here. And now this orientation doesn't matter because the circular electrode Okay, and then we have to set the current here to minus one milliamp. So we have current flow from the other electrode to the other one. Okay, so that's basically, we can also look at the shapes of the electrodes here. And then you can correct this, this, uh, these orientations if you don't like them. All right, um, so then if you choose the simulation, options and uh, there's a couple of different things uh, you can output so you can for example output the potential the vector e field so the different directions of the e field normie is the strength uh, of the electric field you can also have the current density and the strength of the current density the conductivities and then also dadt field but that's only for tms if you have this uh, open in GMS ticked, the simulation automatically opens in GMS when it's finished. I will untick that now and I'll let the simulation run in the background and then we'll come back to it. And there are different options for output. So uh, we can interpolate the results to the subject middle cortical surface. We can transform the results to FS average surface. We can interpolate to the subject nifty volume. And we can also transform the results to the MNI volume. So I'll take all of those and then we can have a look at it once it's finished. All right, so that should be set. And then I'll just press run. And now this will take some time. So I'll go over some other stuff here. So the steps that I was just uh, doing are also on the website. So uh, you can sort of look through that. And they're also in the talks on the YouTube channel. So this is basically what I, what I showed, showed now. Um, you can also, um, of course, do this in scripting. So if I would go 
here. Um, so you can either use Python or MATLAB. They provide interfaces for both. If you use MATLAB, you have to remember to set the path when you open MATLAB so you get access to that the MATLAB folder. Um, so basically, I can show, for example, here I have a Python, uh, Python ID over here. So if I look at this examples, uh, examples folder, which is basically I show it here. Well, so I have my Simnix folder here, and I go to examples. There's different examples for for analysis, optimization, simulations, and uncertainty communication. So here in the simulations, we have different uh, different simulations set up for TDCS and TMS. So now if I pick, for example, here the, the TMS uh, simulation, this is how you do it in uh, with just a script in Python. So here again. You have to set the head mesh um, and then the folder where the results are stored. Select the coil, select the location and direction and how, what's the distance to, to scalp and then just run the simulation. Uh, and that would then produce the, the same results as you get from the viewer. Um, so just a few words about creating head models. I won't go through it here now because if I would run the whole head model creation, as many as you know, many many of you know, it takes about three or four hours in head repo and and even longer if you use MRI to mesh. So again, um, a more detailed talk uh, about head modeling is here in the intro second intro on the YouTube channel. Um, but the data you acquire. Um, has quite an effect on the resulting head model you'll have. So you should have good data. Otherwise, your segmentation will look bad and then the head model is not going to be accurate. So what we recommend is to have a T1 weighted scan, which is fat suppressed, uh, and also a T2 weighted scan where you can see the CSF. So that's easier than to model the, um, the skull, for example, uh, which is important for QDCS. Here's an example of uh, a good. Uh, T1 where you, the fat is suppressed, and here's an example of a not so nice T1 where you can see the fat signal uh, clearly. And in this case, it's shifted a little bit, so it's difficult to do the segmentation here. Um, so yeah, at the moment we provide two head modeling pipelines, Hedrico, which works uh, on all platforms, Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Um, and it depends on MATLAB, basically use SPM and then the SCAT12 toolbox to do the segmentation. And yeah, the, the segmentation runs in about two hours, then plus the meshing on top of that. So it's somewhere around maybe three hours uh, to do the whole whole run. The other option is MRI to mesh, which is the older version for the, of the uh, uh, meshing pipeline. And this only runs on Linux and Mac OS because it relies on free server. Um, and this is these meshes are also cut, so they don't cover the neck. And here, free server runs take a little bit longer, so this might run for, for about 10 hours. So once the run is finished, you can use this Hetrico check function to look at the results. Uh, and you should just check that the, the segmentation looks fine and these surfaces, uh, these surfaces follow sort of the, the intensities of the image. So in this case, this looks like a fairly nice segmentation. Here's an example of not so nice segmentation. So here you can see that the, the skull is, for example, under segmented. So it should be actually covering all of this part, but it's missing, missing, uh, missing part of the skull. Here. There's also, if you call this check command, it also pops out this, uh, this transformation to MNI space. So you can check, check that the transformation looks good. So this, then those electrode positions are also correctly transformed to the subject space. Uh, there's some troubleshooting information here as well. Let's see how our simulation is doing. Okay, so it's still going. Good. Um, I'll also show this visualization part with GMesh once that, that simulation finishes. So we'll just wait, wait a bit for that. Um, I'll go through some some of the other examples. Um, so, so yeah, I talked about the scripting simulations. That's pretty pretty easy with MATLAB or Python. Uh, then 
you can also do different type of analysis. Uh, for example, Roy analysis using uh, in MNI space uh, or or in uh, in surface space um, using this uh, gray matter central uh, surface. And again, all these examples that are shown here uh, on the website, you can also find in the example folder. And then just test these out with the example subject and see what it, uh, what it spits out. Um, is there something? I think one. So I should show these advanced features. So we have also a group data set, uh, which you can download. So this is um, sort of this will show you how to do analysis on a, on a group data set in the FS average surface. Um, so how to run the simulations first, uh, consort uh, all of the subjects, uh, looping over over all of them and setting up the simulation and running it. And then uh, once you run it, how to extract information from uh, from the heat fields and, and sort of get these statistics out for different drawings, for example, or different cortical atlases or areas. Um, so that would be something if you're interested in looking at that. Then we also have TDC optimization. Again, here I would point to uh, talk by Kilarm. That covers it pretty well if you're interested in that feature. Um, then we also have TMS optimization now that was provided by, by partly by Constant Advisor and, uh, and Luis Gomez. Um, which you can sort of set up targets in the cortex and then optimize coil positions uh, to hit those targets. Um, and otherwise, I think once the simulation finishes, I can show it. But otherwise, um, if you have any problems, then probably know to email us uh, either at support at cmnips.org or then. Uh, we have this other email option now, discuss at simlips.org. Uh, those uh, emails. Um, oh, you can not access the archive. Oh, sorry, here. Um, so you can actually search this archive as well. If somebody else has asked the same question, you can check, um, check if that has been answered already. But otherwise, just contact us and we'll try to sort out the issues as fast as we can. Uh, we still have to wait here a little bit. We have the TMS simulation is done, but the TDCS is still going. I'll just check how it looks like here. Okay, we're getting some results of this, so we can have a look. Um, so now I did two simulations. So uh, I have the TDCS results from the TDCS simulation and also from the, the TMS, uh, TMS simulation. So I'll have a look at, the, look at the TDCS stuff. So I can just double click this thing and it opens in GMesh. All right, so here you can see the electrodes we defined. Uh, I can also just visualize those and, and sort of the currents that are uh, going through them. So here we define one milliamp, and here minus one milliamp. Um, here's the strength of the, the electric field uh, on the cortex. I can also visualize other, um, other surfaces. For example, spatter here. So here's how the field looks on the white matter. So we get the, the vector field. Um, if I would pick one of the volumes, let's say that, then 
we can also clip this um, clip this scan and look at how the field looks like in the cortex. So GMesh is quite powerful uh, tool for visualizing these fields and and, and meshes. So uh, you should play around with it and. And we also have some uh, some extra material on how to visualize stuff on GMesh and how to make um, sort of different visualization of the fields. Um, so that was the, the TDCS simulation. We can also look at the the TMS results. So and this is the the electric field strength and uh, the, the coil position we define. And here I'm sort of visualizing the coil dipoles as well. So you can see where the coil uh, roughly is. Um, and again here, you can for example take the volume. So that would be also visualizing the, the volume elements and then look at how the field looks like inside the gray matter, for example. All right. So what do we have now? So okay. Um so we have some of the some of the um options that I ticked ready already. Um so I'll maybe show the subject overlays first. So these were the, the results interpolated to the, the central gray matter surface. Um, so again, we have the result for TDCS, we have the result for TMS, and then we have also all the results written for the left and right hemisphere. Uh, and here we have the central surface for the right hemisphere, central surface for the left hemisphere. And again, if I double click this, I can open the, the e field results. So here, now this is the, the central gray matter surface. And now we if I just look at what we have in this mesh. We only have the surface. So there's no other elements here. Um, so this is the strength of the E-field on the surface. But because this is a surface, we can also visualize the other components of the field. For example, the normal. So how much, uh, how much, uh, uh, Field is sort of flowing into the cortex in red and out uh, of the cortex in blue. Uh, also have the tangential components or the strength or the length of the tangential component compared to cortex um, and the angle uh, of the field compared to the, the normal. And same thing for the TMS, it looks a bit different. We can have a quick look, but uh, otherwise the results are, uh, the results that are written in disk are, are the same. So again, the, the strength, the normal component, the tangential component, and, and the angle. All right. Um, so for group analysis, it's good to have uh, the results on an average surface, which in this case is the FS average. So this looks like a little bit of a, like a simplified brain. Um, so this is the FS average template. And here now the, the, the subject specific results the, of the, from the simulation are mapped to the, the FS average. And then if you have multiple subjects, you can map all of them to the same surface and then do uh, two different uh, statistics there on that surface, which is then normalized over the subjects. So here again, we have exactly the same results. We have the strength, we have the normal component, uh, and general component, and the angle of the field. And I'll skip the, the, the TMS results now. It's basically the same thing. Um, then we also have the field in volume space, uh, because I take that option, I can visualize that as well. Uh, so here I'm working in Ubuntu, so I have access to to free surfers, so I can use preview to to 
build these files. So I'll take first out, take the T1, I'll open that. So this is basically the standard earning T1. And then I'll open the simulation results. And subject volumes, and then I can again open the TDCS and TMS results, all of them. It takes a bit of time to load this. Good. Um, so this would be the electric field from the TMS stimulation. So the electric field strength basically mapped onto the voxels. So yeah, this is a little bit, uh, the volume space is always a little bit trickier to visualize because there's also the, the skin and scalp issues here in the same volume. So it looks uh, like the field is very high in the skull and the skin. So looking at the, the cortical uh, field is a little bit trickier here. It's easier using surfaces. Um, we also have the different field components. Um, I'll change things to this. So here basically for X, Y, and Z in volume space. And the same for, for the TDCS simulation here. Uh, so again, this shows the strength of the E-field and also has the electrodes uh, in, the, in the field volume. Good. So the final output we had uh, is the results in in uh, MNI space. So I'll just open the MNI template first. So I have it in the SIMNIPS folder. Uh, go to SIMNIPS, resources, templates, and I can open the MNI template here. And then I'll open the output. which is MNI volumes. Okay, so I didn't write out the TDCS results yet, I can see. So we'll just look at the TMS here. Um, so this would be then the TDCS field, uh, or the strength of the E field from the, uh, sorry, TMS uh, simulation in, in MNI space. So this is another way to do group analysis in if you want to do it in volume space or map certain things to, to MNI space, then uh, you can take that option to, to interpolate the results to MNI. And here we also have the different field components, uh, again, uh, that you can visualize also in MNI space. All right, um, so that was more or less it. Maybe I'll show one more simulation. What's this one? I can actually just terminate this. There's not yeah. coming out of that anymore. So I'll just show one, I'll just run one script uh, as an example of um, how to do, how to sort of script the simulation. So this is an example also again from the example folder. This is not yet in MATLAB, it's only in Python, um, but this is a simulation script for doing uh, n times one sort of centers around montages. So here I have already defined the path to the Ernie mesh uh, and path where I wanna save the output results. And you place the central electrode somewhere, here I'm placing it on C3. Uh, and you define the shape of the electrode and the, the dimensions and thicknesses of the different parts. And then you can define the radius of the centers around montage. So here, this is in uh, millimeters from center of the center electrode, center of the surround electrodes. And then you have to define the direction 
uh, of the, the surround montage, basically. Uh, and then you can define if you have a multi-channel uh, stimulator or, or just a single channel. So I'll just run that, and these results will pop out uh, once it's finished. So there you can see there's five channels, one for the center one and uh, four for the surrounding ones. Uh, and then the input is coming in from the center and then split to the surrounding uh, electrodes. This will take a bit of time. Let's see. Maybe I should just show where the. Um, so yeah, if you open these different uh, different modules, you also find uh, the publication, so you can read in detail uh, about sort of the results. I think they're also listed uh, at the end for different different setups. Um, but I saw at least in the poster presentation, people were some people were using this optimization. The montages already, so that's good to see. It's not impossible to use at least. Just wait a bit more. At Ola, while we are waiting for the results, uh, I want to remind you and everyone we have QA um, box on the bottom of your screen. Um, so maybe you can uh, address some of the questions that were answered. And people can ask their questions, not only general questions, but their specific question Once that is their finished, specific then, uh, research. We can start with the Q and A, I think. If it ever finishes, I will. Okay, good. Yes. A little bit more, and I hope we're there. Um, yeah, for people who are more interested in sort of detailed documentation of, for example, the, uh, the Python stuff, if you want to code something more detailed, then the documentation is here. You can, of course, also look at the, the GitHub page uh, for the source code. Yeah, I think we could actually already start with the Q answering Q&A and, Q &A and when, the results, when, they, when, when the results yeah, come up, that. we can, yeah. we can do that. We'll just wait. Yeah. So um, maybe I could start a, start a bit yeah. uh, with the Q&A. So from, from Yuki Mitsutani Tibo. Um, so the Team S e-field simulation, when you don't when the call model is not there, so we have additional call models 
available from which are some of the paper from CT Deng from 2013. Um, please check those out as well. If they're not available there, the call that you're looking for, you can still contact us. It might be that we have, have the model available. Um, we try to make more models available um, later this year. We're not there yet. Um, it will take some time, but um, you can for sure ask us. Maybe we can help, help you out already. Um, then I'd like to answer number uh, your, your third question first, because that's an easier one. How can I set up a core location within my I coordinate? Uh, so there's a small tutorial on an example how to convert between MNI coordinates and and, in, uh, and subject um, coordinates in the examples, um, which you can um, basically uh, just look at and then plug into plug into your script. So you would then basically have one additional command in your script, um, which you then can run. You can, when you want to use the graphical user interface instead, you can also run this command on the command line. So, um, and just then convert and enter it into, into the graphical user interface. These two, uh, these two options exist. Now, your second question is, is interesting. Um, also from a scientific point of view, namely, does the E-field differ depending on the TMS parameter? Um, obviously, the, when you change TMS parameters of a repetitive TMS protocol, the outcome of the simulation changes wildly, but this is nothing but what SimNips really um, captures. SimNips just gives a snapshot of the electric field, which, which our TMS call induces, um, usually at the time point when it's strongest. So th this is a very restricted uh, amount of information, which is already useful. But um, then you have to uh, look into how this electric field acts on the neurons and activates the neurons. And then inside those, and I guess that's why you're asking for RTMS, um, inside the, also the neural network, um, then induces neuroplastic effects. And this is a very, very complex. And I think this, uh, uh, what, what Andreas Vlachos as, as shown today is a first attempt on try to also model this um, on a single subject or sorry, single single neuron level initially. Um, so this is not and yet something which which is easily available um, and um, is still I think um, a little bit earlier in, in research. So so far you get only get electric field strength information out and what the neural effects then look like, and because only those would differ between the different RTMS protocols, this is something which is uh, which needs additional information because then you have to run neural simulations. I hope that that answers this a little bit. Um, then there's uh, from from Saga Romanello. Um, you can do cerebellar stimulation. Yes, um, you then have to just manually define the coordinate of the cerebellar stimulation as a coordinate um, and the direction and inside the cerebellum and it, it, it will do it. Um, I guess for cerebellar sim stimulation you might then consider to um, potentially change your um, EEG cap a bit to add more electrodes, maybe also further down. This is something which you have to do one time um, in for the MNI template, and we can also give you hints on on where where this has to be changed, um, just to to ensure that the optimization then also figures out a proper way of of stimulating the cerebellum. Simply because when when your electrode coverage um, is too too limited. Then it will give you the best possible result for this electrode montage. But de facto, you might want to consider electrode montages which have a larger coverage, also uh, at the back of the head, uh, the head also further down. Um, so when when this is of interest for you, we can also then just point you to um, where to add then additional electrodes um, uh, to to a to a file and then run the head models again um, to to get further further coverage further down. Um, otherwise, um, it doesn't really differ from optimization of, of um, other uh, or for, for normal brain stimulation uh, of the cerebrum. Um, only the way you pass on the coordinate is, is slightly different. That's, that's basically it. Um, then from D, 
Lea Chauvela. Um, there's again the question um, for TMS calls. Yes, please ask us. You can use multiple TMS calls when you have different TMS calls. You just have to set up a simulation for each of them. Um, and then you will have just two, two simulation results. So now you want to look into uh, MS calls. Um, this is, again, something which is not really in SimNips. What you can do is um, you can simulate the electric field for each of the calls indiv individually to, for, for example, see um, how much the fields overlap and how much they're separated. I guess um, you want, when you want to make it from A to B, you want to make sure that, that also the fields are separated properly for, for, the, team, for the different team S calls. But um, then to simulate a directionality effect, that would be more a, a model, a, a causal neural model, for example, of causal, causal uh, connections, um, which is a much more, it's a very different way of modeling. It's a, it's a high level model of how different um, areas of the cortex interact. What you can could then inform this model potentially with is um, the strength of the stimulation from from the SimNips field. Um, that's something you would, would then do there. Um, then we have the an anonymous attendee um, there who asks um, about importing the results from TMS Opt into neural navigation software. So um, this is something. Um, which we want to simplify in the future. Um, right now, it's. I I think the the trick is to run it, to run the head models with head recall and not MRI to mesh. Uh, but when you do it with head recall, then the difference is that it just leaves all the spatial information of the T1 as it is, and also the output coordinates, um, which then TMS op gives, are in the spatial coordinate system of the original T1. And uh, what that means is that you should, with a little bit of luck, you, you should be just able to use exactly those coordinates as input coordinates for, um, for, for your neuro, neural navigation software. Uh, because also normally no, neural navigation um, um, software also doesn't change the spatial information um, of the T1, but also saves the, the call coordinates in the SIM uh, coordinate system. So with a little bit of luck, just use head reco and see whether you can really simply um, use those coordinates. If you get stuck on that, again, um, then I would say uh, write us on the help list and, and provide some information which kind of neural navigation system you're using, and then we try to help you further with that as long as we don't have supported it um, more, more, more systematically, which we plan to do, but it will still take a bit of time. Um, yes, and then again, anonymous attendee asks, is it possible to simulate an RTMS session or only single or pulse TMS? Well, um, I think that again relates to my answer uh, to one of the prior uh, questions, namely that what we simulate is just the electric field at the time point when it's strongest of a single TMS pulse. And um, how now the effects, the neural effects um, of this electric field look like and how the uh, uh, neural effects of several pulses interact. This is um, not part of SimNips, this is then part of neural modeling, um, which was which already pointed out by, by um, Alexander Flach, Andreas Flachos um, today, um, uh, that this can be done, um, but um, needs then additional software, for example, Neuron, or, um, which, uh, or the, the toolbox from, from Alexander Rupitz now, for example, which can do that. Um, but I would say this is still much more on our early research level. Um, um, and because it's it's really a difficult question on how RTMS pulses interact to create some neural modulatory effect, but it's very exciting. Um, if you want to, if I want to remove so from Gasali Soleimani, if I want to remove non-brain tissues, including electrodes, skull, and so on. Um, so in case you want to remove the brain tissues 
the non-brain tissues only from the simulation results so that basically it looks uh, like um, not, not as Uda has shown so that we see all the fields also in skill, skull and skin and so on. Um, but um, that it's um, that we only see how the field looks like in the brain. Then you can simply apply a mask and actually there's a, uh, which is just loading in um, the file, multiplying it with the mask and then visualizing it. And there's actually a, for each Hetrico run, there's a mask generated, uh, which um, inside the M2M folder and also the updated Ernie um, head model. Uh, it, so Ernie head model didn't have it for some time. Now it has it. Um, for um, now comes with that, and um, I just posted in the chat how this is named. So it's. I have it up here. Do you have it up here? Ah, oh, perfect. Yes. Um, so it would be the GM from mesh would be, for example, the gray matter, um, which you can use as mask, and when you multiply your electric field results with that everything else will be gone and you will only see the gray matter, for example. So I think um, that's the way of visualizing and extracting results from, elect from the electric field uh, raw files when you want to then specifically analyze fields in the nifty volumes, um, but only obviously in, in, in the brain, basically. Then we have another anonymous attendee. Um, if the segmentation of NHP is done, do you think it will be possible to use SIMNIFS for, for simulation of all primates later on? Um, yes, I would say so. Um, right now, it's uh, so after segmentation, you have to create this mesh, which is the news for simulation. Um, this is moment at the moment still uh, a little bit of a technical hassle um, to go from a segmentation of our uh, t1 and t2 and ct and so on of a non-human primate uh, once you have the segmentation to a mesh um, however we will majorly simplify that in, a, in, a, in the next release um, uh, of simnips which will come somewhere this year we, I, I, unfortunately i cannot promise some some date until then i have once this release is out, it will be very easy. Then you can actually mesh anything where you have a segmentation from quite easily to get a mesh which you can run in, in the simulations. It can then be uh, non-human primates. It can also be uh, segmentation of your dog or whatever you want to simulate it on. Um, so that will be quite flexible, um, but you have, unfortunately, to wait a bit um, until this will be available. Um, again, from another anonymous attendee, is there a way to perform single subject thresholding? Yes, in principle, um, that's exactly what SimNips uh, gives out. It gives electric field strength, and you can then say, well, um, I select some threshold um, of the uh, electric field and see um, how much of the field in this particular subject is above this threshold. Or other way around, you can also say, okay, um, I just select, expect a peak field from that subject to get a marker of how strongly I stimulated that subject. And that's a marker which I could then, for example, try to, to relate to some behavioral results. Um, so um, that, that is the information you, you, um, you get from the simulations. Now, when, when what you wanna, set a threshold, then the tricky question is uh, more really on a level, on a scientific level, uh, not so much on the simulation level, namely which threshold do you use? And um, this, ideally you would use an electric field threshold uh, where you then know, okay, when I'm above this electric field threshold, then I'll actually get my neural effects of my stimulation. But um, this is extremely tricky. This is, um, I think there we still need um, more research to get into uh, reliable threshold estimates and it will differ between subject, it will differ between uh, also brain errors. So that is that's quite tricky. Still, you can do that um, and just um, get some impression on, for example, how large an area is likely which is stimulated in a specific subject. 
but the way you choose the threshold at the moment is still, um, I wouldn't say subjective, but um, well, there's a subjective choice component for sure in it, uh, that there's a certain ranges where you know that, okay, when you're below, it's very unlikely that you stimulate when you're above, um, then it's quite quite clear that you stimulate and you will probably then have some gray zone in between where you then have your subjective choice and say, well, that's probably a good, good threshold to work with at the moment. Um, Maxian, Maximilian Lückel asks, how can one use the affine transformation matrix defining core position and, uh, um, and directions for neural navigation with local light? Um, so the answer I think is twofold. The, the, the one thing is that at the moment um, you can um, really just look at the last three, it's a four by four matrix, right? And the last part gives then the position um, of the call center. And this position you can at the moment just manually extract and use as a target entry for the localized system so that you get at least the, the position of your call center correct. Uh, that's something you can do. Um, you can, in addition, also um, define the, the directions, basically. I mean, we're, we're talking about just a fine transformation looking somehow like that uh, with 60 years of freedom. Um, there again, I would suggest that you either contact us on the um, via, via support and we can try to figure out how to make it work for your specific case at the moment. Otherwise, we will, um, our plan is to implement an import export function so that then um, this gets easier there um, yeah, for, for that. But just using the center of the coil is right really quite easy. Again, use head record, not MRI to mesh, so that um, the T1 information about how the, yeah, how the coordinate system runs basically for this subject is not changed. And then it should be very straightforward to just take the last three uh, numbers in, in this matrix uh, and just enter it as, as target position. It, it, it should work. If not, let us know. What are the main softwares and tools for brain simulation besides SimNips? Um, I am also new to SimNips and the software seems so one, useful and wonderful. So thanks a lot that you like the software, that, that's, that's highly appreciated. Um, so I guess um, we have to distinguish between simulation of brain stimulation and generally um, simulation of brain function. Uh, so in terms of um, simulation of brain stimulation. Um, there's also the ROSE toolbox um, available from the Parabixen group, um, which is, uh, can only do electric stimulation simulation. Um, but um, apart from that, there are also commercial tools available, but I think these are the two main free tools which you could use. Um, either our SimNips or then ROST for also electric stimulation. Now, um, when we talk about brain simulation or simulation of neural networks, I think this is a pretty endless uh, field. Uh, there's really a lot of uh, things which, which, uh, which have been developed. Um, when it's about specifically about um, single neuron effects, then there's the neuron um, toolbox, which is uh, quite large and long-standing toolbox, um, uh, which is available for, for that, um, for example. But otherwise, it's it's a pretty wild, wide field. I mean, it, you also have then to choose which level on you want to uh, simulate, for example. Um, neural mass models are also a simulation of brain activity, but probably on a much, much higher level, where you then more are interested into how, how networks uh, interact, for example, and try to match that to EEG data. Um, so um, there I cannot really give a general answer. It really depends on what you want to simulate that. Is there any chance to adapt Hetrico in order to use a MATLAB runtime machine, uh, rather a full MATLAB installation? 
Uh, no, um, there's not. And um, we also uh, are planning to get rid of MATLAB uh, fully because we think it's at the moment uh, indeed a limiting factor for, for many reasons. It um, also in our support email, when, when we get um, emails um, when because something didn't work out. It's most often something with Hetrico actually, um, simply because uh, then the link with MATLAB on the specific cluster also did not work out. Um, so we will replace it rather fully, and this will be somewhere in the second half of this year, um, probably a little bit later, um, so that then um, there will be an update where this is then in a way obsolete um, uh, and you don't have to worry about that anymore. So then it will be really the case once you have downloaded the SimNips, it will be run, it will be running just standalone without any external libraries, also the segmentation. And this will also be distribution or, or work on clusters and so on much, much easier. Um, then one more question from another anonymous attendee. Um, what is the best procedure to perform e-field modeling with tumor or stroke patients? Um, so, um, I, again, I have a twofold answer here. Uh, the first is um, last year there was actually a ni nice video from, from Alexander Opitz um, group um, on the just the same workshop just the year before. And um, I guess you can check out the resources on, on Alex um, uh, on Alex web page where there should be a demo on how to include tumor and stroke mod uh, I think it was stroke modeling um, into into uh, head models which were created by, by Hetrico. Um, so this is available right now. You can watch it and then it takes some some, some tweaking and maybe actually also um, in the second modeling session tomorrow, um, the, the Minnesota guys um, could maybe mention that briefly again and how, how that was done to get you started on that. Um, that might be useful. And the, the other question, the other answer is okay, later this year when this, when also again MATLAB goes out of this um, brain um, head mesh building then also these things will be very easy in the sense that um, when you have a tumor or a stroke patient, you just need to provide a, a mask, a, nif a, nif a nifty file where the tumor is uh, or where the stroke is, and uh, that you can use to um, easily change your head model then. Um, so this will make things much, much easier, but this is work in progress. And again, I have to um, ask you for your patience till um, later this year so at some point. Um, because exactly those things were difficult or are still difficult with SimNips and we are, we are trying to resolve that basically so that it can be used also much, much easier in, in clinical studies in the future. Yes, um, yeah, thanks a lot for all your questions. Um, that so far that I think, I hope I answered all um, properly and tell, uh, so that you think it's helpful and can can um, ah, there's one more. Yes, as far as, as I see, SimNips uses fixed conductivities. Can those be modified? And I guess that's a good point to hand back to, to Ula, who can first of all uh, again show the results of this scripting uh, um, simulation of this 4 cross 1 montage, and then also can briefly show where you can set conductivities um, in the graphical user interface, for example. You can also do it in this in, in via scripting easily. Um, if that's if it's for some reason not documented in the homepage or, or you don't, don't find it, then please uh, again ask us on the support email, and then we'll happy to help you out. But at least for the graphical user interface, um, um, Ula, Ula can quickly show that to, uh, while yeah. he's now taking over again. Yes, yes, thank you. So yeah, this was just a four by one montage result. So this was actually quite a big cross that we simulated here. But but yeah, it's just basically the, the same as before, but now with a different different montage. Good, and conductivities, which one am I on now? I rarely use the GUI, so. <laughs> yeah, it just opened in with some. Head mesh. Head mesh. And planned some montage. Ah, okay. Let's 
It's better to stay these days, I think. It doesn't. Do okay, uh, you, Ula, it doesn't have to go for, further than here. Um, so there's this set oh, conductivities yeah. button. And here you can just change the conductivities as you like them to be. Um, you can actually then also um, set the brain, uh, brain tissue to anisotropic. Um, this means that you have to have a diffusion tensor scan, which you pre-process and then use that um, as input to your simulations. Um, the early example data set comes with such a pre-processed uh, diffusion tensor image uh, so that you can run it also then here. Um, we support different ways of mapping from, uh, from diffusion tensors to conductivity uh, tensors and uh, they're, they are described then also in our, yeah, in, on the Simmons homepage in, in more detail what they, what they mean. Otherwise you see which, which, um, which kind of conductivities we have so far defined and there you can change them. Basically. Yep. What would you suggest for targeting white matter bundles? Um, I I don't know. Um, so I think actually it depends a bit on whether you want to do a TMS stimulation or an electric stimulation. Um, it's relatively clear that electric stimulation, when you just get, um, so transcranial electric stimulation, when you go, just go high enough in intensity, um, you hit white matter as first thing. Um, so this, this has been demonstrated actually in the very beginning of transcranial stimulation, um, of modern transcranial stimulation by Merton and Morton. This was 1980, something like that. Um, there, I think the only thing is that you need to increase intensity um, to reach a threshold, electric field strength, they bear then excitation of white matter bundles. So to really induce action potentials there is, is likely. Um, for TMS, um, that's an interesting question because I mean, in TMS, it's, it's known that mostly um, gray matter is stimulated, right? And um, now, um, Obviously, when you go higher in intensity, it's also becoming very clear that also white matter is stimulated. Now, when your goal is to um, specifically stimulate white matter, but not gray matter, then I think um, the, I cannot give a general answer. I think it depends much then on the call orientation relative to your target areas. And all what is known is, is there, I think, only for M1, um, where um, for the motor cortex, where then a direction LM, um, lateral medial um, current flow in TMS has been shown to directly activate white matter. With white matter, I mean that it can also be just the, the, X, it's the exon hillock or something like that. It doesn't have to be far in, in white matter, but it's at least an exon which is stimulated. Um, but I don't think that there's general knowledge on how to preferentially stimulate white matter with TMS, for example. Um, that is probably not known. Only for the specific case of, of motor cortex. Um, Would there be any way to model a more complex TMS pulse where the orientation of the ve field vector is changing during the pulse? Um, yes, um, the orientation of the field, I mean, I guess the way you create a change of, I'm just guessing here now, otherwise please, please let me know, Gabby. Um, uh, so the way you create a change of the orientation is probably that you have a coil which, which switches between, which has several, several sub coils and then switches between them to create some, some vector field, which for example, rotates. Um, if, if you have that in mind, um, you can simulate that. Um, you basically have to sep uh, then simulate for the different sub parts uh, separately and then add later on together in the post-processing step. Um, that works. 
Um, if I misunderstood your question, just let me know, and then we try to, to figure out um, the, the, the answer. But there have been attempts to, to create a rotating field for TMS to get um, rid of the uh, directionality effects. Um, this has been demonstrated, and that's something you could then really simulate by having um, the separate um, field uh, call components, which create the direction of fields, but which then are switched. Um, basically, you, you simulate them separately and then start adding later on together. So, okay, cool. Uh, it seems I, I hit your question, or that's great. Um, yeah, thanks a lot for for um, for your attention and all your um, questions. Um, um, so with that, I like to thank you, and I think I'll hand over to to Ivan again. And I think then we call it a extremely nice first day of of this workshop. <laughs>